the Russian people, although they treated us with suspicion and uh, they were afraid to associate with us, were by nature not cruel. Uh, some were actually quite good people. They would even share something uh, of which they had very little with us. How could one survive such an inhuman existence? It was a terrible, terrible ordeal to be in a camp. You had to work, you had to suffer the hunger from morning till evening. You were wet from working in a powdery snow. There was no way of drying your clothes up. You felt worse than an animal, and yet you had to believe that there might be, there must be somewhere a higher being, God, who will, if we believe in it, will protect. Maybe we'll get out of it somehow. Maybe I will get out of it. Because I noticed from my experience that those who lost believe in themselves were dying very rapidly within days. Our beautiful childhood was replaced with a nightmare. When there is hunger and misery, you can't think, you simply turn into an animal. We were like two little wolves, two puppies thrown out to be drowned. On June the 22nd, 1941, Hitler unexpectedly attacked the Soviet Union. Paradoxically, it was the moment which brought deliverance to thousands of Poles incarcerated all over the country. Following Churchill's advice, General Sikorsky, Prime Minister of the Polish government, now based in London, signed a treaty with the Soviets, as a result of which Stalin agreed to an amnesty, a pardon for the Poles who were allowed to form an army. It was to join the fight against Hitler, now the common enemy. Whatever the freedom means in Russia, it was still a wonderful day for me when I was made free. I was called to the small office and they handed me a ticket, a railway ticket, and a little note. Not to say that they were sorry, but <laughs> I was released. I remember it was so warm. We were going across the field, and in a little valley there was still water, warm by the sun. I walked barefoot in this water, and it was so wonderful. And it was only then that I understood that I was free. But the Soviet authorities did not want to free the amnestied Poles. They needed every pair of hands to work for an economy weakened by the war so many had to escape. The only way out of Kvasha was the river, and we had to transport 400 people with their belongings. For that purpose, we had to build 20 to 22 rafts, each consisting of about 20 logs, which we had to carry on our backs from the forest to the riverside, and had to make the rafts without a single nail. The journey lasted seven days. It was sometimes snowing. We had to spend the nights on the riverside under a primitive roof made of freshly cut branches. Leaving behind their places of confinement was by no means the end of their misfortunes. Janina's tragedy struck on her way south to freedom. Suddenly, at night, the train stopped in the snowdrifts. And it turns out that, according to the train driver, the engine is broken and we have to wait all night. Around us is only snow. The temperature is minus 40 degrees. And in the distance, you could see the lights of a small village. The people were hungry and desperate. So they decided to go to that village to get some food. My mother was among them. When they were walking up to the wasting snow, the train suddenly started. There was great despair. The children cried, 
and I realized that this might be the last time I saw my mother. And that's what happened. I never saw her again. And I understood that I became the only person at the age of 13 who would take care of my brothers. Their odyssey went on relentlessly. Exhausted, bedraggled and lice-ridden, hundreds of thousands of those released from the camps and settlements were making their way from the remotest corners of Russia, determined to find their army. But the further south they came, the more they were struck by terrible epidemics, typhus, dysentery and malaria. Many thousands were buried by the roadside. Janina, on an open cart, was sent to a Soviet orphanage. After two days, when we arrived, my brothers had developed high fever. We were admitted to a hospital, but on condition that we would not be with other patients, but in a wing under reconstruction. They put in three beds, and there, in the dark, by candlelight only, I lay with my sick brothers, who had high fever and were unconscious. After three days, the younger one, Spishek, died. He was two and a half. I spent the whole night with him, knowing that he was no longer alive. Only in the morning they took him away. I never saw him again. I don't know where they buried him. There was a nearby hospital cemetery where they simply buried the bodies without coffins. And at night, animals, hungry dogs, often dug up the graves. Jurek lived a few days longer. He was delirious, kept calling mother, and he too, after six days at the hospital, died. I was told that on leaving the hospital, I was to bury him. With a friend, I went to a storeroom for blankets and sheets, where on the floor, on a stretcher, lay my brother. They gave us the stretcher, pointed to the cemetery, gave us the spades, and we went to bury my brother Jurek, who was then just eight years old. People were dying like flies. There was daily about 100 people buried. Uh, there was no normal burial. They just put them into some uh, sort of the hole, put uh, some soil on it, and then the next row of the people, our relatives that came to, to Siberia or the port of Siberia, there was 43. Only 23 survived. My uncles, my grandfather, my uh, grandmother all died in the, uh, in, over there. The main army reception center for recruits was Buzawuk. Those lucky enough to reach it alive started intensive training. General Władysław Anders, himself recently released from a two-year stay in Soviet prisons, was appointed commander-in-chief of the Polish army. These new soldiers had to be clothed, trained, and most immediately fed. Although the Soviet troop rations were inadequate, General Anders gave orders that they were to be shared amongst the masses of starving civilians. For women, children and old people, finding their army became the only hope for survival. Then in 1942, General Anders persuaded Churchill to obtain Stalin's permission to let the Polish army leave the Soviet Union. Along with the troops, a number of soldiers' families were allowed out. Put us to the on the train which was going to Krasnovoz. After two years over there, you you couldn't be you, you don't believe that, that the, you could be free. I knew that we are going to Persia, but will we go to Persia or will we land in 